the newbies, a family traveling the world with an ambition to get our son Crusoe to 100 countries before he goes to school. We release videos every Sunday, and if you've been following our journey, welcome back. If you've just tuned in to watch a little boy meet some very curious meerkats, it's great to have you with us. A couple of weeks ago, Crusoe was feeding giraffe and hanging out with elephants, so if you haven't seen those episodes yet, then please do check them out. Anyway, wherever you are, we wanted to say thank you for your support. This is our 14th African vlog. It feels like just yesterday that this adventure started. And with only one more week left on the African continent before we jet off to our next destination, our journey here is almost complete. Please, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up and turn on those notifications so that you never miss an episode. Thank you for helping us grow and for joining our journey. It's an early start today because we're off to go and see some meerkats. We hope. Look at that sunrise. Mega. Right, ready? Let's go. You ready? We're ready. We're going to take Crusoe's car seat. We're going to drop off the laundry. Okay. Camera, Bino's hat, nappy bag. Okay. I've packed enough food to feed a small family. Okay. He will eat it all. Yeah. Let's get going, we're let's, late. Let's get going, we're late, we're late, we're late. So we did have company this morning, um, two lovely ladies who were gonna join us, and they've just changed their mind, which is actually a bit of a relief because it's five and a half hours on the vehicle with Crusoe, and it's just going to be us, so we can have tons of flexibility. We can stop if we need to. Phew. Just a private tour to see the meerkats. I actually think that Crusoe is going to fall straight to sleep when we get him on the car. And I think he'll be asleep for the first good, at, well, at least an hour, maybe even an hour and a half before we get to the meerkats. Hopefully, he wakes up nice and chirpy and cheery, and the meerkats are delighted to meet him and uh, all goes smoothly and well. We'll find out just now. So a quick cup of coffee before we head on out. into this expedition. We'll be heading more south of where we are, um, all the way to, to, the, to the edge of the pan. And we'll be driving into a very, very rough road, bumpy and muddy road. We'll be driving, um, we'll take like two hours from okay. here to there to get to um, the Miyake. Okay. So it's 40 kilometers okay. from, cool. from where we are to there. So, yeah, that's it. So, Perfect. ready? We're ready. We're ready. ready. Mornings in Africa are quite simply made of magic. As the sun rises over the horizon, it lights everything with a golden glow, gently playing through the leaves. Setting off on a safari at this time of day is always exciting. The air is still cool from the night and anticipation hangs gently in the air as you gear up for your first encounter with whatever it is you're hoping to find on the adventure. Today, we're in search of meerkats, 
But that didn't mean there wasn't time to stop and appreciate the other treasures along the way. And our guides, Fabio and Bacas, were a wealth of knowledge. There's a tree that you see there, very close to like maybe 45 centimeters. This one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this tree? Okay. Yeah, I see that it's, uh, most of the branches have been eaten, most of the leaves have been eaten, you see that? So it's a Mopani worm. So local people ah. eat that, the stapled uh, food for most of the tribes um, around here. I've right. tested it and uh, Bacos, it's, um, it's like his beef. So Mopani um, tree has got, to, during the summer season, peaks, the protein levels peaks to about 15% of it. So all these worms, they go for Mopani trees. They don't go for any, they don't go for any tree. You see that caterpillar there? See? You see that it's got uh, it's got some like spines, like thorns. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Spikes, or what we call it. Eat it, man. So it's eatable. You roast it, and then uh, you dry it. You roast it, you can cook it while it's like that. Mm. What you do, and plunge it from the tree. Most, mostly when you get a huge swarm of these, um, um, caterpillar or these um, worms, yeah, you wouldn't really get to see all these leaves around here. Yeah. Wow, so, and then what happened is they actually fall on the ground and pupate and then come as a moth. Mm. If you ever you have seen the that impera moth, yeah. yeah, so that's a larval stage yeah. of that web, okay, because so, there's so many moths around camp, definitely. Lucy, are you having fun? Our journey continued into the early morning light, with Crusoe cuddling up and taking advantage of the bumping car to have a little snooze. We're in a part of Botswana called the Makadi Kadi Pans. They're what's left of a great lake that covered most of southern Botswana about two million years ago. But more about that later. As the woodland opened up to plains, we finally arrived in Meerkat country. So somewhere down here are oh, the meerkats. I can see some, yeah, bouncing around down there. Cool. And this guy's job that is walking here, I think I've found the coolest job in the world. He's a meerkat habituator, and he just gets to hang out with him all day. <laughs> I want that job. I want to be a meerkat habituator. Can you see them, Crusoe? Look, there they are. Just saying hi. Here we are. of meerkats is a very special one. They've been gently habituated over a course of a number of years by the team at Uncharted Africa. Just by a man sat around them from dawn until dusk, they've become comfortable with visitors. And as we walked slowly towards them, they were completely unperturbed by our presence. We had arrived just as they were setting off in search of breakfast, and we were fascinated to learn about them from Fabio and Bacchus. Meerkats can smell food buried 45 centimeters in the ground and they were frantically digging away for grubs, beetles, and anything else that they could smell that took their fancy. We were particularly charmed by this mum and her pup, one of seven whose siblings we meet a little later. The whole meerkat family forages for food for the little ones, and the alpha female knows exactly who's given something to her babies. If one of the family decide not to give something to the little ones, they're evicted from the colony for good, so it's serious business. They'd scurry over and feed the little chap constantly, and we couldn't help but draw comparisons between their lives and ours, as Crusoe shouts, Nyam! most of the day at us, and we're With supposed me. to be constantly eating. Yeah.
Introducing Crusoe to the wildlife of Africa has been nothing short of pure joy. To watch him engage with the world around him, pointing out birds, giraffe and elephants with a huge smile on his face is something we will cherish forever. To now sit with him surrounded by meerkats, us trusting them with our little baby, just as they're trusting us with theirs, was such a privilege. The whole colony had returned to their burrow to get the rest of the litter of pups out, and they came so close to me I could have almost kissed them. This was without question one of the most joyful mornings we've spent in a long time, and we were left smiling for ages after we'd said goodbye. A memory to cherish forever. To see the meerkats and experience the Makati Kati Pans, we stayed at the brilliant Planet Baobab. We loved our time here and would absolutely recommend it to anybody looking and heading in this direction. Okay, so we have had the meerkat experience and that was pretty epic, wasn't it? That was probably one of the most joyful mornings I've had ever, ever, ever. Tara got so close to the baby meerkats. They, they were, were literally like 10 centimetres on my face. It was yeah. amazing. How she didn't pet one of them, I don't know. <laughs> I had to sit on my hands. <laughs> anyway, um, now the next plan is, um, Fabio, we're heading over, over to the pan, are we? We're heading um, over to the Makhari Kari Salt Pans. Right, okay. So we'll be actually right on the edge of it. Um, and then you can see the view and we'll talk about a little bit um, about history and why it's like that and it's going to be short and brief. Great, Brilliant. okay. Kadi pans are some of the largest salt pans in the world and are what remains from what scientists believe to have been one of the largest inland seas on earth, estimating that it spanned anywhere from 80,000 to 270,000 square kilometers. For much of the year, the salt pans glimmer in white, parched by the sun and the salt. But during the rainy season, when we're here, 
the area is transformed into a crucial wetland for migrating birds and mammals. We visited the outskirts of the Ntwetwe Pan, and from where we're standing, this salt flat extends for another 200 kilometers and is about 190 kilometers across. In the drying season, this area offers an abundance of activities that we're looking forward to doing when Crusoe is a little older. Quad bike excursions into the wilderness and sleep outs under a blanket of stars in the middle of the pans. One thing's for sure, we will be back. Well, there you have it. We have seen meerkats. First time in our lives and it was absolutely terrific. It was magical. Completely magical. Even cooler that Crusoe got to crawl around with the little buggers too. Yeah. Mm, next up, cold drink at the bar and of course... Like, subscribe, turn on notifications and leave us a comment. Yeah, definitely do that. Um, we're always replying to our comments and if you're feeling generous and want to buy us that time, Head on, head on over to Patreon where you can um, buy us a pint. Buy us a pint. See you next week. See you next week.